Hi, my name is Claudia Hassan and today I'll introduce you to Call to Adventure. It is a storytelling game for one to four players um, with a duration of 30 to 60 minutes by designers Johnny and Christopher O'Neill and published by Asmodee. In this game, players will lead their own hero to their destiny through acquiring traits and allies and facing various challenges and adversaries. Let's see how we play it. Each player receives a player board where they build their story of their hero to begin with. In addition, each player will be given two cards of each of the three types of character cards, Origin, Motivation and Destiny. These cards will guide the hero during the game and provide him with the skills and runes to be able to face the various challenges ahead. They will then choose one of each and arrange them on their board like this. Their destiny card will remain hidden throughout the game from the other players. In addition, each player receives three experience tokens and one hero card. Experience tokens function as currency for various actions in the game. Hero cards provide single-use abilities for the player who uses them. Here we see a hero card. When played, it awards one victory point at the end of the game, and this area of the card shows its effect. Also, we have anti-hero cards, which act the same as hero cards. After receiving these components, we will take this hero marker and put it on the corruption tracker. This indicates the player's morality level, if there are more on the virtuous or corrupt side, and it will also indicate certain points at the end of the game. It also tells us what kinds of cards we can play, hero or anti-hero. For example, if the player is in this space, um, he will no longer be able to play hero cards, only anti-hero cards. In addition, we will make available to all players this tray with all available runes. Finally, we will put these three decks here and draw four or five cards depending on the number of players. Only the cards of the first act are left face up. These cards are the ones that will help us to create the story of our characters, which we will position behind our three initial cards. Those of the first act are normally positioned behind the origin, and those of act two and three behind their motivation and destiny, respectively. I say normally because there will be certain conditions that allow a player to have cards from another act in their hero cards, which we will detail later. To access these cards, players must fulfill certain conditions or face rune rolls on their turn. On their turn, players must access one of these cards and also have certain optional actions as many times as they can. Pay one experience token to Journey, which involves getting rid of one of the cards deployed and drawing a new one. Play a hero or anti-hero card and play a hero or ally card actions, for example. Now we will talk about the cards that can be found in this area. There are two main types of cards, trade and challenges, and two more that we can add in future games, allies and adversaries. The first ones are traits, which provides runes, cards, victory points or symbols, but to acquire them you must fulfill the condition indicated below. In this case, for example, the trade card asks the player to increase one space in the corruption tracker and awards two experience tokens and these symbols. Then we go to the challenges. Each one has two paths along which a hero can go and each one of them award different symbols. These cards can only be acquired by casting runes that equal or exceed in value the number indicated here. Now we'll explain how to solve a rune roll. First, the player takes the three core runes, which will always be the basis of the stock of runes available to the player. They will then look at their player board and count how many rune symbols they possess of the different type of runes that exist. In this case, the player has this and this, and this way they will be able to draw one for each symbol they see. Now, this player draws one of this, and also one of this. It is important to consider that each card can only be resolved with the runes that are indicated in this area of the card. 
So if the player has runes of another type on their board, they will not be able to use them. In addition, it is important to consider that for each color rune, there are two equal runes and one special one. This special one can be only taken once the player has three symbols of this rune on their board. Before that, only simple runes can be taken. All runes have a similar language. The dashes symbolize one point. The symbols of each rune stands for two points. And these ones represent zero points, but the possibility of taking a hero card, an anti-hero card, or an experience token. This is clearly stated in this area of the player board. In addition, there are black runes which are optional, and the player may pay one experience token to add one of these to their stock. These also have a one-point side and a two-point side the moon. But beware, in case of getting this side, the player will have to drop one on the corruption tracker. So to meet this challenge, the player will take this and pay one to take one of this. They will then roll the runes and proceed to count how many points they got. If the player equal or exceeds what is indicated in the challenge, they will succeed in meeting the challenge and will be able to add the card to their board. If they do not meet the challenge, they must discard it to a discard pile and draw a new one from the deck. Here we got one point, one point, two and two points for a total of six. And the challenge requires only four. So we are okay. And also we get one hero or anti-hero card of our choice. We'll draw one anti-hero card. Since we beat this challenge, we get to put this card on our player board. Going back to the cards, there are other types you can find, such as allies and adversaries. Allies are found in decks 1 and 2, and when one of them appears, the player in turn must put this ally under a challenge, and the one who overcomes it will win the ally, placing it next to their board and granting them new abilities. Now the challenge will have plus 1 difficulty and other award symbols. Finally, another card must be drawn. The adversaries are found in Acts 2 and 3 and work in a very similar way to the challenges but with the difference that they have only one path to take and are harder to beat. In addition, they award points, runes and story symbols, they possess powers that affect the game itself and these are the runes for beating them. After a player manages to put three cards behind their origin, Act 2 will open and on their next turn, they will turn over the cards of this act and will no longer be able to access the cards from Act 1. Same way for the third act, when one player puts three cards behind their motivation, the third act opens and every player can choose cards from this act. Once a player puts their third card behind their destiny, the last round of the game is activated and the other players can take one last turn. After that, the destiny cards are turned over, which provides several points for the end of the game. And finally, the points are counted on the score sheet by putting together the points of the destiny card, the triumph and tragedy points, the points for this track, one point for each unused experience token, the points of the hero and anti-hero cards, and these story tokens that award points for how many of them the player has. 2. Give 2 points, 3. 4 points, and 4 or more 8 points. As always, the player who gets the most points is the winner. Finally, each player proceeds to tell their story using their origin, motivation, and destiny cards in conjunction with the trade, challenge, and adversary cards they encounter throughout the game. This is how the game is played, now I'll tell you a bit of what I think about it. First of all, I'd like to say the game presents the dynamic of casting the runes, which is fun because you throw them and you see what you got and it is pretty cool. Um, in addition, it has nice graphics from its illustrations um, to its components, um, so everything looks very well displayed on a table. Also, the fact of being able to tell a story at the end of the game is something that motivates uh, most of the people I have played this game with. 
Um, it is very interesting to know what happened to our heroes, and even if you add a bit of humor, you can laugh, laugh quite a bit. On the other hand, if a player loses two or three challenges throughout the game, the chances of them managing to win are almost zero. Um, even though the game has mechanics to balance the bad luck in the runes, it has happened to us that players get frustrated because there are no traits available and they are not able to get good results even if they have a lot of runes. In addition, I must say that the game rulebook is one of the worst I have ever seen uh, in a game. This is due to two reasons. Um, first of all, it fails to account for all the rules in the game in a logical sense and it leaves many gaps and situations unexplained. Um, this is especially disappointing in a game that involves cards and a large amount of language used on them. The way each card is worded is not consistent and fails to be effective in covering the full range of situations that can occur. Um, this happens at least in the Spanish version, but I think something similar happens um, in the English version too. In conclusion, this is a decent storytelling game and the room mechanic is quite interesting. However, the difficulty is to fully understand every detail um, and the possible scenarios of the game due to its poor manual is extremely frustrating. So this is why I give this one a 6 out of 10. Thanks for watching, I'm Claudia Bassan and I'll see you in another round.